Today in the Kennedy Arcade, things are going to get a little hot. What? All right guys, welcome to another episode of the Canadian Arcade. And in this episode, we're gonna continue on our track and field restoration. Now, we have a few steps before we get ready for paint. So we're gonna cover that in this episode. Uh, we're gonna pull some bolts off the side. We're gonna pull this old side art off because it's really damaged. And I've already got some fresh new reproduction stuff from Phoenix Arcade. Uh, we're gonna do a little bit of work to the wood on the back. Um, we've got some Bondo work on the front to do, and then we're gonna clean it all up and get it prepped for the paint booth. So without any further ado, let's get to work. All right, so I've gone and I've cleaned off the rest of the adhesive from the side art uh, with a little bit of goo gone um, and just a, just a rough towel. Um, and then I, I took some Mr. Clean Magic erasers to the outside of this and, and the side is actually, like the finish on this cabinet is actually in really good shape under that dirt. Um, cannot stress enough how awesome Mr. Clean Magic erasers are. So that's actually led me to kind of think about a couple of things here. First and foremost, I might not even refinish these sides. We'll, we'll take a look at the other side and we'll see how much damage is on there because I know there's a couple of nicks. Um, but this, you know, makes me feel like I probably don't even need to paint these, um, which is, you know, a, a nice feeling if I can save some money. Um, one of the things that I've learned over the years with working on these games is the vast majority of people do not care about the tiny little things. You know, you get the game to 80, 90%, you'll be obsessing for, you know, 50, 60% of your time over that last 10% of things that you know are all messed up. And I mean, that's okay. If, if that's the kind of person you are and, and you're a completionist and, and you want to get every little nook and cranny and every little tiny scratch, I mean, to get it back to museum showroom quality, even off the floor, I, I've, I've got, you know, my Make Tracks is a new old stock game. It's got like 300 plays on it. I, you know, the thing came out of a crate, basically, and barely has a nick on it. But, I mean, do it to the level that you want, but don't don't waste your time. Don't be afraid to, to change your mind and, and, you know, adjust your plans, uh, especially if it can save you a ton of time and a ton of money. Um, if a game is staying in your collection, like this one will be staying in my collection, you make it the choice. Are you going to put it to 100% factory fresh and, and spend hours and hours on the tiniest little scratches here and there? Sure, go for it. Um, but if not, and if it's just good enough, most people aren't going to notice. Um, I find that you know, 80, 90%, 95% of people um, or 100% of non-collectors don't give a shit if there's a tiny little nick somewhere on the back. They, they won't care, they won't even notice. They'll be more amazed that you have a track and field cabinet um, than you know you have the perfect track and field cabinet. Um, so a few blemishes, a few scrapes, those are, those are okay. Uh, yeah, spend more time focusing on the things that really matter, like the close-up stuff, like the control panels, the buttons, that kind of stuff. Spend your time on that. Anyway, I, I guess voice of reason for me, which is strange. I don't know how I'm the voice of reason for anything, but it is what it is. So yeah, anyway, so we're gonna flip this thing over. We're gonna take a look at what the other side looks like and then we're gonna pull the side art off of that, clean it up as well and, and kind of make a decision what we're gonna do with the rest of the, uh, the white sides. Uh, we, we do know that we will have to paint uh, and Bondo the front because we are adding Bondo, uh, but uh, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Okay, so I've got the, this side completely clean and uh, <laughs> really this is the only nick in the entire side. I mean, there is one a little bit closer uh, to the front over here, but it's minuscule. I might just touch that up with a little bit of white paint. But seeing how this is really the only piece that's scratched and it's under the side art, I'm just gonna sand this down and I'm gonna add a little bit of Bondo to level it out and then give it another quick sand. And then that's it. I'm not gonna probably paint the sides. 
Uh, I say probably because I may still change my mind. But uh, yeah, that's cool. All right, okay, we're gonna flip the cabinet over onto its back and we're gonna take a look at the front. All right, now we've got the cab laid down and I can get a much closer look at some of the damage to the kick plate. Yeah, this is gonna need some Bondo and some sand. There's no question. We are definitely gonna be painting the blue um, because, I mean, it's, it's all marked up. You can see there's black everywhere coming through, everywhere the blue scratched off. We'll give it a light cleaning uh, just to get some of the grime and, and dirt and crap off of it. Uh, and then I'm gonna hit it with some Bondo to, to rebuild this corner and to fill these two holes where that stupid lock bar was and uh, maybe a couple of other marks like this one here. Um, there's a couple of other nicks. Uh, but everything else should be pretty good just to give it a light sanding after the Bondo dries. And then, uh, then we're basically gonna clean the inside of the cabinet and prep it for paint. So, cool. Uh, on with cleaning. All right, so now it's time for the Bondo. I have gone and fitted some wax paper around a piece of plywood, uh, just a little strip of plywood. And I'm gonna use this kind of like as a form or a mold uh, along the edge. I, th I thought about just doing uh, the chip here, but the rest of this edge is a little beaten up. So if I can, you know, if I'm bonding this, I might as well do the whole thing. And, and plus putting this down and, and clamping it down with this, uh, I, I was gonna have to, you know, clamp down that edge anyway. So uh, this will just give me an excuse to, to do the whole thing. Um, so we'll do that first, and then we'll move on and, uh, and do these two lock bar holes. Now for those, uh, I was gonna put some doweling in there and, and plug, them, plug the wood up with some pieces of wood and doweling, uh, but I don't have doweling to that size, uh, and the hole's really not that big. I'm just gonna mask it off on the bottom with some tape um, so that the, the Bondo doesn't fall all the way through, and then uh, I'm just gonna fill it to the best with some Bondo. Should be fairly easy. I, I've repaired much bigger holes in wood uh, with that method, so. All right, so now that the sanding is out of the way, um, I gave the whole cab a quick little wipe um, down on the front. So anything I sanded, um, I wiped down with some damp cloths, uh, microfibers, just so the paint goes on really well. Um, one thing that I didn't do, and you're gonna look at this and go, hey, I mean, there's still some blue left. I know you sanded all the black off the bottom and over here, but this blue's fine. Well, interestingly enough, this cabinet is in amazing shape and none of this blue is actually damaged. So I gave it a wipe down and I kind of, I kind of felt all the surfaces to make sure that there was no, um, no big chips or gouges or anything and I gave it a good wipe and, and it's solid. The paint on there is solid, it survived. I mean, there's one chip up here but that's gonna be covered by a bracket anyway. This down here, however, just above the control panel, that was kind of damaged. So I gave that a good sanding. Um, I cleaned off some of this and then I did this off camera because it was still kind of gross and disgusting in there. Uh, the bottom needed to be sprayed with some, some cleaner and, and wiped down a second time. Uh, whatever that fuzz in the bottom was just wasn't, well it was gone for the most part but it was still kind of dirty and musky and crappy down there. So um, I did that and I'm just gonna wait, it's a little, not damp, but it's, it's, it's kind of damp. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna clean it with uh, the vacuum before the next step. Um, now, the next step is, because we're gonna leave the white sides alone, um, the next step here is going to be uh, mask all the white off. Uh, once we've got the white completely masked off and, and safe and protected, and we'll even go and, and plug these holes uh, here where there are no bolts. Um, then I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna paint the black first. We'll take it to the paint booth. I'll give it a good coat of black spray. Everything on the top and on the back, I'm gonna spray. I don't really care if I get a little bit of overspray on the blue, because the blue's gonna get painted over. Um, these cabinets, 
uh, the, the, the blue and the black kind of have been mixed with the paint. You can definitely see a lot of blue overspray that have been pushed towards the back. So I can tell that's pretty much exactly how they did it from factory. They put the grill and the handle on top, sprayed the whole thing down, and then, uh, yeah, pr pretty much sprayed the blue. Um, so we'll, we'll do that in a, in a minute here, but for first, uh, the first step, I gotta, I gotta go get the vacuum and kind of vacuum the bottom out again. So um, I'll go do that, and then uh, we're gonna start uh, taping off the sides. So this episode of the Canadian Arcade is actually sponsored by me. We know a lot of you guys out there are working on your own track and field restoration projects and by far one of the hardest parts to find is the control panel. So I went ahead and reproduced them. We're doing both the button and the trackball version. They're steel, they're a perfect fit, and they're powder coated black. We're shipping worldwide and if you'd like to find out more information about how to get one for yourself, go ahead and check out the information down below in the description. With that being said, let's get back to the video. Something that I'm actually known probably quite a bit for in the arcade community, uh, around here anyway, is uh, over taping things. <laughs> so I mean I put a double border of tape around here just to seal it because I wanted to seal the T-molding slot down, but then I wanted to fold it over, but then I wanted to give some space for this to grip. I, you know what, I'm just, I'm just hedging my bets. Tape is cheap. Uh, well, maybe not this blue stuff, but tape is relatively cheap. Um, and if I can avoid uh, wasting time and money with magic erasers afterwards on that white, I'm gonna be way happier. Um, all right, well, she's ready to paint. I think I'm gonna go change into some um, painting clothes and then uh, give it the first coat of black. Um, so just to recap, really, really quickly, we are gonna blast the inside of this with flat black. So we're gonna do the top, we're gonna do the inside of the, the speaker area, back of the monitor uh, area, and then the back, and then all of the inside and the bottom is gonna get a nice hit of black just to kind of cover up that, well, grimy, I tried to clean it the best I can, but it's getting black. Uh, no, nobody will really ever see the inside of the cabinet, but I'll just feel better that it got a nice coat of paint inside. Um, not too terribly much, but we'll get that, especially the top. Like the top is just ratched. Like you can see where it started to, uh, you know, uh, it's just crap. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna go change into some painting clothes and uh, we're gonna put some first, we're gonna put the first coat of black on this thing. So, all right, let's get to it. Okay. Oh, uh, so that's gonna be it for the black. I did two coats. I mean, it's just the back black bits. So like, you don't really need to see it. So I'm, I pretty much did them all in one can, which is awesome. These 25% uh, more Rust-Oleum cans are sweet. Um, so next, we're gonna let that sit for a little bit and then we're gonna lay the cabinet down on its side side on its back and uh, we're gonna paint the blue. Um, I was gonna paint the blue with it standing upright, but there's so many vertical surfaces uh, that I would much rather do it with it on its back um, just to, to minimize any kind of drip or run. But um, still, I wanna make sure that, uh, that I don't mess this up because we're in the home stretch now and uh, yeah, we almost got a cab that we can, we can assemble. Pretty exciting.
All right, guys, well, that's gonna be it for this episode of the Canadian Arcade. We've got the cabinet down here in the basement ready for reassembly. So next steps in a future episode, we'll put the T-molding on, we'll put the side art on, we'll do all of the installation of all the little metal bits which we had powder coated, and we're gonna also do a high score saves kit on the PCB. If you don't wanna miss out on that, make sure you hit that subscribe button and also hit that little notification bell so you don't miss that episode. If you guys like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below in the comment section. And if you guys want more from us, we're doing a ton of stuff on social media, especially Instagram. So go ahead and check us out there. Till next time, thanks for watching. Hey Google, stop the music. Today in the Canadian Arcade, things are gonna get a little hot. You're very welcome, Chance. I didn't, uh, sometimes I hate Google. I remember doing that from the reality TV show days. Every time there was an airplane that went over, we had to like, halt filming so the sound guys didn't like lose their mind. And it's gone. Okay. This is way easier if it was on its side.